geopolitics in the Middle East can be treacherous. In the absence of a common enemy, allies have turned against one another and old rivalries have resurfaced. This situation is best examined in the Republic of Iraq. While the disintegration of the country has been apparent for years, now, however, the decline of ISIS has revived old disputes among the Iraqi Kurdish factions. The recent flashpoint in the oil-rich city of Kerkuk is a manifestation of things to come. As the guns fall silent, diplomatic talks have started on the new geopolitical arrangement in the affected area. My name is Shirvan and welcome to Caspian Report. Help us to produce more original content like this by supporting us on our crowdfunding platform on patreon.com slash Caspian Report. In spite of all the geopolitical disputes in the Middle East, when it comes down to Kurdish independence, international and regional players alike are in agreement and oppose such motions. Turkey, Iran, Syria and Iraq have their own Kurdish separatist movements and therefore reject an independent Kurdish state. But even distant powers such as the United States which has portrayed itself as an ally of the Kurds has chosen its relationship with Baghdad over Erbil. In this regard, Washington's geopolitical inconsistencies have become a hallmark of US foreign policy in which its policymakers have time and again focused on immediate operational objectives with little regard for what comes next. The Trump government, like the administrations before it, is concerned that an independent Kurdish state would aggravate the existing conflicts in the Middle East and thereby undermine US credibility and influence in the area. Prior to this, the Kurds were necessary for the fight against ISIS, however, as fighting has moved away from the Kurdish-controlled territories, the Kurdish Peshmerga has become less necessary, which explains why Trump chose to abstain from the Iraqi Kurdish standoff in Kerkuk and will continue to stay out of the affairs of Baghdad and Erbil. Closer to home in Iraq, the recapture of Kerkuk will allow Baghdad to redirect the flow of energy revenues to itself rather than the Kurdish capital Erbil. This will inevitably harm the latter's financial state. However, changing the flow of oil is easier said than done. For the past three years, the oil industry in Kerkuk has been integrated into the energy sector of the Kurdish regional government. Nearly all of the infrastructure of the major oil fields heads north to Erbil. Undoing this system will take time as Baghdad will have to construct new pipelines to exploit the local energy output. In the meantime, policymakers in Baghdad will use the output of oil as a leverage to bargain for concessions from Erbil. For instance, Prime Minister al Abadi could decrease the production of oil and thereby increase financial pressure on the Kurdish government. The more Baghdad decreases the production of oil, the more financial pressure it can put on the Kurds. In the coming weeks, this leverage will play a fundamental role in the talks between Baghdad and Erbil. For Iraqi Prime Minister al-Abadi, it is imperative that he maintains his credibility in the Kurdish negotiations ahead of the general elections in April 2018. Al-Abadi has built a respected reputation as he is one of the few Iraqi politicians that has tried to accommodate the Sunni, Shia, Turkmen and Kurdish communities. This is in sharp contrast to the previous rulers of the country. In the preparation for the 2018 election, Al-Abadi could seek to exploit Iraqi nationalist sentiment to strengthen his support base. This would require the Prime Minister to win a symbolic victory in the talks with Barzani, which could include the resignation of the latter. That said, Al-Abadi does not hold all the cards. Among other things, he has no real control over the Popular Mobilization Forces or PMF for short. The PMF is a collection of about 40 Shia militias. Their funding, training, arms and intelligence are provided by Iran. 
The militia conglomerate was created as a response to the rapid expansion of ISIS and, since 2014, the PMF fought ISIS with fanatical zeal. Today, the militia conglomerate boasts a 100,000 strong combined force. They are stronger than ever, they are confident in their abilities and are determined to hold on to the power their members have died and fought to gain. The rise of the PMF has strengthened Iran's influence in Iraqi affairs, however, as is the case with most Iranian proxies, Tehran has no firm control over the group. Some PMF elements want to part ways and have their own agendas. For instance, the Shia Turkmen brigades of the PMF want to put the Kurdish aspirations for independence to an end. They refuse to negotiate a settlement and it's unclear what exactly these potential splinter PMF brigades will do if their demands are not met. For the most part, Tehran has the most influence over the PMF. In this context, Commander Iqbal Pur plays an essential role on behalf of Iran. He is believed to be a high-ranking operative with links to Qasim Soleimani, who leads the Guds Forces of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard. Soleimani, nicknamed the Shadow Commander, is a veteran of Iranian geopolitics. He is responsible for setting up Iranian proxy groups throughout the Middle East, and the PMF is his latest creation. Both Iqbalpur and Soleimani have been long involved in the matters of Iraqi Kurdistan, ever since the Iraqi Kurdish civil war in the mid-1990s when Barzani and the KDP sided with Saddam's Iraq, the Iranians backed the Talabani clan and the PUK. In the aftermath of the fighting, a stalemate was reached and the PUK as well as the Iraqi Shia elements came to rely on Tehran for aid. Prior to the referendum, Soleimani had asked the authorities in Erbil to cancel the vote and instead promised them to address their rights within the Iraqi constitution. While Talabani complied, Barzani refused, which offended Soleimani. So Barzani and Soleimani have a grudge against one another. For Barzani, the loss of Kerkuk has damaged his credibility and overturned his plans to win the presidential and parliamentary elections that were scheduled for early November. Recently, the Kurdish parliament postponed both elections by eight months. In other words, Barzani has lost much of his leverage and must restore his political support. He could do this by exploiting Kurdish nationalism and by blaming PUK officials and the Peshmerga brigades as traitors. However, such an approach would invite an equally harsh response by his rivals and from there could spiral out of control and raise tensions. A more diplomatic outcome is that Barzani steps down as the president of Iraqi Kurdistan. He already froze the referendum results and resumed diplomatic channels with Baghdad. However, General Soleimani, for personal reasons, wants Barzani to formally resign. In the coming weeks, Barzani could use the democratic restrictions of the Kurdish parliament to voluntarily step down. Many Kurdish opposition parties are at odds with Barzani's authoritarian rule and the fact that he extended his presidency despite the term restrictions. The latest presidential term extension is set to expire on November 1st. For Barzani, stepping down voluntarily in the name of democracy would allow him a graceful exit from Kurdish politics. The problem, however, is that the Iraqi Kurdish parliament voted to delay the parliamentary and presidential elections that were scheduled for early November. If Barzani resigns now, it would leave Iraqi Kurdistan without a president and without elections to find a replacement. The most feasible alternative to Barzani within the ruling party is his nephew Nechirvan Barzani. 
He is the least associated KDP member with the independence referendum, which gives him a clean slate to work with. Nachirvan is also an experienced diplomat. He negotiated a number of trade and energy agreements with Turkey, so he has close connections with officials in Ankara. And for his credentials, many consider him as the most realistic alternative to Barzani. That said, Netshirvan's rival is his cousin and Barzani's eldest son, Masrur, who also leads the Kurdish intelligence apparatus. Masrur has good relations with Washington, which is detrimental to neighboring powers such as Turkey and Iran. If Barzani steps down and whether Netshirvan or Masrur is appointed as the acting president, an immediate crisis between Erbil and Baghdad would be stalled. In the long term, however, the Kurdish crisis will leave the political landscape of Iraq on the edge. Kurdish factions are divided, and Iraqi-Kurdish relations are set for a new round of sectarian hostilities. Even if diplomacy prevails and compromises are reached, there are just too many fires to put out. In general, the Kurds have not been in such an exposed geopolitical position since the failed autonomy deal with Baghdad in 1975. As such, despite the will of the people, Kurdish aspirations for independence may well be postponed for generations. This was a Caspian report by me, Shirvan. Special thanks to our top financial contributors for making this report possible. If you enjoy our content and you want to see us remain independent, please consider joining our crowdfunding platform on patreon.com slash Caspian report. For now, thank you for your time and Saul. So